What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. We've hit the outer chest, we've hit the lower chest, today we're hitting the upper chest. And more than any other opportunity here, you're gonna have a great chance to sort of get right at this area because our anatomy is going to favor that. So what I'm talking about is when it comes to the upper chest, we obviously, we break out the muscle markers here guys to put the science back in strength and we're also breaking Jesse out a little bit to show off some new gains, but that's from in a moment from now. You can see that the clavicular portion of the chest comes off of the clavicle and runs down in this direction, okay? Separate than the rest of the chest itself. And actually separately innervated that allows us to actually target this area a little bit better than any other area of the chest. But what we really want to do, as always, is follow the fibers. What that means is if we can take our arm and move it in the direction that the fibers run at the same oblique angle, then we know that we can hit this upper chest a lot more. And that means that we can take a strategic approach to the exercises that we do. Look, even if you look at the incline bench press, you can see that it is following the fibers. It is taking the arm through that range of motion. And if you're not sure if you think you're pressing at an oblique angle, if you're pressing straight overhead, when you sit up, if you kept your arm in the same position, you can see that it ends in that same position that you would if you followed the fibers and ended up here. So we can do that with more than the incline bench press. I know you know that exercise. I've got a lot of others uh, for you here, including body weight options, that are going to allow you to really hit this area hard once and for all. Okay, first up is actually a variation of an exercise that I've actually covered for you here on this channel before, and that's the UCV raise, and we're doing that with a dumbbell. And you can see that when we do this exercise, we are, yes, following the fibers, moving in that preferred movement pattern. But we can actually take this and make it one step better, because we could do this two arms at a time with a cable setup like you see me do here. Now this is actually taking advantage of a PNF movement pattern, a principle based in physical therapy that allows our bodies to move as we neurologically prefer to move, which is good news when you're trying to get better recruitment of these upper chest fibers. So what we do is we have our arms out at our sides, just a little bit away from the body, and of course as we pull up, we're getting that mimic again of that movement pattern, but also we have the opportunity to cross the arms at the top, get the adduction we need to get a full chest contraction, and make this a great exercise. You'll see as Jesse's doing this exercise here, the one thing you really, really want to focus on is as you come up and pull your arms across into that adduction, you don't want to let the chest cave in. You want to try to simultaneously stick the chest out as you cross and go for that really good contraction every single time. Okay, next up we actually can put an advanced twist on a classic exercise that's no more for hitting the lower chest, and that's the dip. And you can see as Jesse's doing here, this dip is effectively targeting the lower pecs. Why? Because it's following the fibers once again, hitting that abdominal head here as we talked about before in our lower chest solution video, which is this video over here. And if you haven't seen it, guys, I will do you a favor and I will link it for you at the end of this video but we know that we can go the opposite direction here. There is a way to do a dip, but to get those arms up in that preferred position, following the fibers up top, we can do that. But like I said, it's hard. So you can see as I back myself into a wall here and walk my feet up, the crucial thing is keeping my arms up overhead away from my body. So now as I get in this position, I try to mimic a dip holding onto those dumbbells so I have the same sort of feeling and neutral positioning of my wrists to come down every single rep and then try to, try to push myself back up. Again, this is not easy, but as you come around the front, you can see that I'm really, really trying to squeeze. If you could, you have the ability to roll the dumbbells slightly, ever so slightly towards each other to get a little bit more of that adduction that we can't do on a bar, a stationary dip station here. But the fact is, this is definitely a tough exercise option here when it comes to training your upper chest, but if you're up for the challenge, it's definitely worth it. Okay, sticking with the body weight options here, we actually have another exercise here, slightly easier but no less effective when it comes to hitting that upper chest. And this is the push away push up. Now the key here is again the initial positioning of the arms. You want them not vertically right beneath your chest but actually out in front of you a little bit. As I go down into each rep, the idea is when I start to push my body back up, it's not just up but it's up and back so that I'm following the direction of those arms and allowing my chest and my upper chest in particular to work here. But it's not just that. I actually try as I press up to not just push but actually squeeze. So I'm trying to actually visualize squeezing my biceps together to get an intense contraction here, a little bit of that feel of the adduction as I press away. Now, if this is a little bit too difficult for you, you can do it with a little bit of a shortened position here by just hiking your butt in the air, as Jesse's doing, and just doing sort of a pike push-up or a decline push-up. Again, with the arms positioned a little bit in front of your body, it's going to allow you to target more of that upper chest here, regardless of which version you use. 
The next one here is one I actually love, and it's not just for the versatility of it, because you could just do it with a single band, but also because you're actually getting the contraction on that upper chest, both coming from below and once again up at top. And we call this a sunrise sunset. You can pretty much see why. We start in this sunrise with the arms moving up, but most importantly, what are they doing? They're following the fibers. They're coming from this low and outside position up and towards each other at the top. We get that contraction. You can easily see the upper chest handling a lot of the load here, but then we come back, we reverse the direction, come all the way out to the side, loop around, and come back down, and then we dive in from the top. This is actually mimicking what an upper chest dumbbell pullover would look like. And I've covered that exercise before too. That one didn't even make this video, and I love it. So it goes to show you how many options we actually have. But the key though is, because we're driving our arms down, it's finishing in the contracted position with them angled up into this position right here, but at the same time, getting a little of that added internal rotation of the arms, that can intensify the chest contraction as well. So you're hitting it at the top, you're hitting it from the bottom, most of all, you're definitely hitting the upper chest, and that gives you another option here, no excuses, that you could do at home with just a single band. Okay, this next exercise actually gives us the option of using heavier weights, because we're going to shorten the range of motion and also shorten the moment arm that will allow us to compensate with heavier weights. And we can load up this upper chest more effectively this way. I actually showed you something we could do that did the same thing in the past with an exercise called the Cavalier Crossover. And we didn't really focus necessarily on moving the entire length of the arm, but shortening our focus to just the elbow on up. But we can still move it up and across our body, as you see me doing here in the crossover, and we can still get that lift. Now, we can make this actually better by using cables that can actually use a more consistent line of force here because the cables do what the dumbbells don't. Dumbbells are more subject to just gravity. Cables can actually follow our movement all the way up. And what we can do here again is shorten that moment arm so we can load the weights up and really shorten the motion itself. And watch as I actually get my arm in nice and tight. We call these uppercuts for obvious reasons. All I'm trying to do is literally drive my elbow up from its position at my side up until it's in front of my chest. But you can see that that is getting a nice contraction on that upper chest area because we're doing what we were trying to do in the first place, and that is drive from that down and out to up and in position, just as we have of every single other exercise here, but we can do it in a very small but intense way. Okay, this next one is a great one. This is actually gonna take the incline bench press and add one small tweak to it that will make it infinitely better. And all we have to do is start using cables. And we're gonna sit at the end of a bench like you see me doing here, and I'm just going to lean back a little bit, about 20 or 30 degrees. And we call this the lean back press. Now, pressing from this position by itself would, we know, hit the upper chest. Why? Because we're putting our arms into that position that we're trying to get to in the first place. But look what we have going on here with the cables. We actually have forward resistance from the cables. They wanna pull me down and forward, those arms down and forward. So what do I have to do? I have to resist and pull back. So I'm actually driving my arms up into this position here against resistance instead of what we do with dumbbells alone where they're only being acted upon by gravity, straight up and down. There is no forward or back component here that the cables are allowing us. Now Jesse will actually demonstrate here what you don't want to do, and that is not leaning back. Now obviously we call it the lean back press for a reason, but Jesse wasn't listening. Actually, what he's doing here is just showing you the fact that when you do this, you now have just shifted that focus away from the upper chest a little bit too high. Now right up on top of, to the shoulders, which we know would happen if you're doing a straight vertical press. And you really actually lose the benefits of that pull, that forward pull from the cables themselves by doing that. So you want to make sure, guys, you're following the name itself, lean back just a little bit and try it, because I promise you, you're going to feel this more than you might even have felt any other inclined dumbbell bench press you've done before. Okay, next up we have an athletic and explosive option here for training our chest. And yes, believe me, it's possible. You don't have to always just pin yourself down on a bench whenever you want to train your chest. You can actually get up on your feet, as you see me doing here. And being on your feet is the first step to being athletic. And what we do is we get ourselves into a split stance here so we have more balance and stability for what? For being able to push more explosively. Load up the weights here and really drive and accelerate them. These are the jammers. Now I'm not saying that everybody has access to this jammer machine at your gym, or maybe even has 
even access to something that does something similar to this. But the idea is if you do, take advantage of it. Use this because what is it doing? It's training your upper chest here if you follow the right alignment of your body. I'm getting here and I'm pushing from down at chest level up and out. Now if you sit down like Jesse's doing here to do this and you press straight up, you've actually dramatically changed the focus once again. You've shifted that focus from the upper chest a little bit upwards to the shoulders that's now not going to allow you to do this. And I wouldn't even really necessarily say that you could be very explosive from here because once again you've taken the feet and the legs out of it. You've now sat on your ass and taken out that athleticism. Okay, and here I actually saved the best for last or at least my favorite. And this is the landmine rainbow. And before you think it sounds all sweet and nice, it's actually a killer when it comes to training your upper chest because the landmine does something very unique. It allows us to do this arcing motion very smoothly because the bar itself, by virtue of being in the landmine, is going to allow for that nice arcing motion. But what we want to do, if we're going to do this right, is we want to avoid, first and foremost, what Jesse's doing here. Sorry, Jesse, I had to do it to you again. What we're doing is, we're avoiding the fact that we don't want to have the torso rotate with the arm as the arm drops down to the side. Okay, and we don't want to keep the arm in a shortened position here because this is one of the exercises that we're actually trying to increase that moment arm and keep the arm moving nice and long. Take advantage of the arc that the landmine provides. And what you'll see is the arm is literally following that same pattern that we want, literally following the fibers of the upper chest all the way up to the top. And once we get up there, we have that brief contraction and squeeze, we switch hands, hitting that uh, upper chest on the other side eccentrically and then coming and driving it back again concentrically on the way back up. So you're alternating left and right. The fact is, this will feel so smooth to you, but at the same time challenging and you're probably not going to need a lot of weight here. I promise you, you might even use just the bar itself, but it is a great way, especially as a finisher, to really wrap up your upper chest training. So there you have it guys. There is at least eight exercises, if not ten, that kind of could be your cheat sheet when it comes to training your upper chest because there is a way to hit it guys. If you remember nothing else, that's what we've been saying all video long, is follow those fibers. If you can take your arm and move it in this direction, some way, somehow, sometimes a lot in a lot of creative ways like we looked at here, the fact is you will have an impact on this area even if at sometimes you might want to back off of some of that flat bench work because we already know that that area is developed enough. This is the area that tends to get overlooked. These are the things we can do to actually address it. If you want me to cover more videos like this, guys, I'll break out the muscle marker. I'll make Jesse the bad example, as always, and I'll make you guys understand because to me that's what matters the most. You put the science back in strength, that's great. The more you can understand why it is, what you're doing, the faster your results will come. All of our programs lay that out step by step for you. They're all over at athletenext.com. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what you want to cover and I'll do my best to do that for you in the days and weeks ahead. All right, guys, see you soon.